just going for a, a corona walk, <laughs> a bit of daily exercise. It's actually rained for the first time in ages, so this has just stopped. Also need to pick up a few provisions. This isn't going to be an epic, it's quite casual, I haven't really got much planned, but I just thought it would be interesting to show you what the streets of uh, this particular part of East London, here in Leytonstone, are like at this stage of the lockdown. There's a few more cars on the road, actually, than, than I've noticed recently, so whatever that indicates. It's interesting, that road over there, Dyers Hall Road, when I went on YouTube earlier, I actually brought up a clip from the uh, anti-road protest that took place in Leytonstone in the early 90s. And there was a clip there of a standoff between a protester and the police in Dyers Hall Road. And you can see that road is truncated by the uh, a wall at the end where the link road runs. If you want to know more about the whole kind of link road situation and the protest that, placed, that took place here in the early 90s, uh, have a look at my Phillybrook video and I'll put some links below. But it was one of the longest forced evictions in European history at the time. And it did throw up a really kind of creative culture around it. I really want to walk up through the tube station, but there's quite a lot of people coming, so I'm going to go over the bridge, I think. And here we have one of the legacies still of the that period of time, the Link Road period. This new building going up here is going up on the site of what was once the 491 gallery. This land actually was uh, occupied by Transport for London for a while, whilst the work was being done on the road, I believe. Before that, it was a safe factory. And they found a really massive safe right in the middle of the building when they were doing this work. 491 was a really wonderful institution. And did uh, art drawing classes there. It was like a community space, if you like. Some people lived in there. I think parts of it may have technically been squatted, I'm not sure. But they used to do a, a, a Hitchcock-themed film club called the Vertigo Film Club. It was great. They used to have parties, gigs. the building of this road here sort of defined the modern history of Leytonstone. Also because it really divided it in half, you know, drove this thing through it. Leytonstone tube station down there. Wonderful little community garden. I haven't, I haven't asked how you all are. How are you all doing? How are you coping with the, uh, with the lockdown, wherever you are? I know it varies from place to place, doesn't it? I believe in South Africa, where some of you are, it's quite strict. Uh, in the UK, it's kind of it's a bit of a mishmash, really. You know, the only shops that are open are food shops. There's a few cafes actually open for takeaway in Walthamstow. My, wife, no, my wife's a primary school teacher, so she's, um, she has to go back to work. She's been back at work this week. So think of the primary school teachers out there having to go in just to walk an hour there and an hour back to avoid using public transport. Um, teaching the kids of kind of key workers. These community bike sheds are great, aren't they? Very popular. Doing a lot to promote cycling in the borough at the moment. That's, that's the wonderful George Tomlinson School there, which I believe is built on the site of a, of a bomb site. It may have possibly been a a flying bomb, I'm not sure, a V1. But if I zoom out, you'll be able to see the contrast with the other side of the street. It's where the uh, famous pop singer, Damon Albarn, went to school. It's funny how memory plays tricks on you. I'm questioning now what was here before. I, I th I'm pretty sure it used to be a pub called Lincoln's that was uh, demolished. Without, I don't remember there being much opposition to it being demolished either. And then these flats were built by, I think, Peabody and CBH, housing associations. That's how the erasure of memory works, isn't it? That's only probably five years ago at most. I used to walk down here all the time and suddenly you're questioning it. I'm almost certain that was Lincoln's, but even then there's a little doubt in your mind, you know? This is Leighton Stone High Road, by the way, which I should have said before. Of course, Lane Stone has a famous association with Alfred Hitchcock, who was born in the area and lived here for the first few years of his life. I believe that building over there, Marnie Court, is named in honour 
of Hitchcock after one of his films. George's cap over there is one of the great old uh, Leytonstone institutions. Fantastic uh, greasy spoon. That's a magnificent building, isn't it? TFC Turkish Food Centre. Great place to buy fresh fruit and veg. But I'm going to be going back up the high road actually to get my stuff. There's a lot more people around than I thought. And actually, I came up the high road the other night and there was hardly anyone. So this is taking me by surprise a little bit. In case you're wondering, it's going to be a bit of a weird route. I'm going to go down here and then I'm actually going to go back up the high road. Stone High Road station down there. I think what we'll do is we'll loop back past there on the way on the way back up the high road. Some more uh, Latin Stone institutions over there. Latin Stone Spice, good curry house, and uh, Hills Newspoint. I used to go in there quite a lot actually once upon a time. Really nice people run that place. So this was once one of the crown jewels of Leighton Stone. It was, the, uh, it was the State Cinema and it opened before that under a different name. I'll put that name on the screen. It's very opulent. Had a very grand organ, which I've been told is still in there somewhere beneath the stage. Now it's a banqueting venue. This is the same area of Leighton in 1863. Many of the names still exist. Southwell Grove Cottage is now a street called Southwell Grove. The Chestnuts is still here, Chestnuts House and Davis Lane. What's interesting to know though, is the large area at the top of the map, the American Nursery. So we'll just go around Trinity Close, past these brand new flats. They've only been here a couple of years. There used to be like um, an NHS site here. I'm not sure what it was. I think it might have been a mental health unit perhaps. We're going to go and look at another one of Leightonstone's lost treasures up here. Can you guess what it is? Now, you have to imagine now, it's a Saturday afternoon, and we're approaching the ground of the great Leightonstone Football Club. Once they were the kings of non-league football. Ishmian League champions vying for supremacy with the brilliant Wickham Wanderers at one point in the 60s particularly. I think that was their heyday. And I think this is the site here. I was actually going to make a documentary about them, about... It was 2007 and I just got a job for a little TV production company and you could make these little short films for, for Channel 4 and pitch them in and I wanted to make a little three minute film about um, when Leighton Stone were the kings of football. Uh, well, the kings of non-league football anyway. I think this was the ground here. Now we're going to turn back up the high road because that's the direction I need to go. <laughs> I need to get some shopping up there. And there's a few more sort of uh, local landmarks of note to, to, to point out and talk about. Hopefully not too many people about. Looks a little bit quieter now, doesn't it? I must have just caught the rush of people coming out after the rain. I mean, some people have been saying that the, uh, the lockdown in the UK hasn't actually been tight enough. Obviously, other people are saying they want to start seeing signs of it being relaxed. It's interesting, isn't it? Everyone has a different perception of what's required, although I would say about 90% of people agree with what's going on and are going along with it in the spirit that, it's, uh, that is required in these bizarre and oh, troubling times in a way, aren't they? But, uh, say... I hope you're all doing all right. The important thing is to stay calm and keep a positive mental attitude if you can. One of the highlights of the Leighton Stone year used to take place in that church hall over there, Lister Road Church Hall, and it was a, a massive um, model train exhibition. Model train enthusiasts would come from all over the country and they do a massive display in there. It was brilliant. Another one of those acts of erasure. I'm trying to remember which one of these shops here was the was the model railway shop. I think it's that one that's now it's either the, the, the nail bar there or the Dolce Cafe. It was a great little shop. And of course the arrow there is pointing the way to Wanstead Flats, which is just down that road. 
and uh, one of the signs of the, the times we're living in is there's now a, a temporary mortuary on once the flats not shown on this map it's just slightly off this map near the city of london cemetery um, it's over in newham and we actually have another temporary mortuary uh, in Leighton, off the map on this side on the lower access road access road south the council depot That's a place in the pantheon of kebab shop names. Istanbul Turkish restaurant. Worth some sort of plaudits. There's Barclay Road here. A reminder of the association with the Barclays banking family in Leytonstone. I think that comes via the, uh, the Buxton family who lived at Leytonstone House and they married into the banking family, the Gurneys, who were the Bankers Bankers, and they merged with another bank to form Barclays Bank. There are strong Quaker associations in this area. There's still a big Quaker meeting house up there in the Green Man Roundabout. You know, yeah, the, the Buxtons were Quakers, the Barclays. I think Lister back there is the famous Lister, uh, the famous Dr. Lister. I have a feeling they might have also been um, uh, Quakers and uh, Elizabeth Fry, the famous Elizabeth Fry over there at West Ham Park. Again, I think Quakers. Lots of famous Quakers in this area. Yard sale pizza, delicious pizza, and they seem to be doing an absolute roaring trade during the lockdown. Their bikes are all over the place. That's the snooker club up there. I've never actually been in there. I was invited in there one night after being uh, after the weather spoons had shut. But I declined. I thought 1.30 in the morning, I'm not sure I want to go to the snooker club, really. Uh, and here it is, the red line. Oh, how I have missed going for a pint in the red line. In fact, the last pint I had in the pub was in the red line. That pint I had in the red line after the uh, World War II over once their flat walk. Do you remember that one? In there, that feels like a very long time ago. I miss it so much. What an amazing pub, what a majestic pub. Please come back to us. Interesting features here, you'll see. The, the, the top of the red line is a ballroom, a really opulent ballroom, and I think it was used as a kind of Masonic lodge originally. This is a very old coaching inn. I don't know where it dates from. I've got a, a drawing of it from the, uh, from the 19th century. It looks very different then. number of famous bands played in that ballroom back up there. Most notably the great story I heard was Roxy Music who played there just as they were becoming famous and they lined the entrance, the stairs up there with, with purple velvet so people entered into the venue through a purple velvet tunnel. This, this building here has got an interesting bit of art deco going on there hasn't it? Wonderful Langstone Library there above the Argos, which used to be Woolies. So we hold our monthly film nights. Come along, Langstone Pop Up Cinema. Church Lane down there. Of course, here's the wonderful St John's Church. Not a fantastically old church, but still, really beautiful church that is. And there's the Lunar Lounge, brilliant live music venue, live music seven days a week. Can't wait to get back in there as well. It's a really good night out at the Lunar Lounge. And here's the wonderful Hooksmith Press, Russell Frost. He did, uh, he did the maps for my Wolf and Forest Borough of Culture walks. He's got some brilliant artworks in there, has Russell. Just going to do a couple more places uh, because my family are patiently waiting at home for food. But there's a couple of places that if I don't include them, I will get stopped in the street and berated. I'm already going to get berated for the things I've left out anyway by a couple of local people. But so make sure you look at the comments and you'll see some wonderful anecdotes in there from people, I'm sure, and some of the missing information. But this here, Massillon, is for a lot of people the most famous building in Leytonstone. So this was once the site of Leytonstone's great landmark, 
Behrman's department store. And if you talk to people, you know, who lived out in Essex, I've got friends from Grey's, and they used to come here every Christmas to see Santa. It was a real, a real destination. Its loss is still keenly felt by the people of Leightonstone. I believe this car park here was at one point a cinema, which I think was the, the rink cinema, and I think there was a, a roller skating rink here. I'll verify that when I get home and, and correct that information on the screen. And here's what's now called the Birds. Originally it was called the Crown, and it dates back quite a long way, the Crown. And the Birds is another one of our fine Leighton Stone pubs. We also do some interesting events in there as well. Right, I'm going to show you one more place, I think. I know I've missed out loads, but I've got to try and stretch these <laughs> lockdown walk videos out over, I don't know, at least another three or four weeks. I think over here. I think this row of houses here are the oldest buildings in Leytonstone. I'm led to believe. I think they're Georgian. This heritage plaque here. Late 18th century Georgian terrace erected for wealthy merchants and businessmen. Thank you so much for coming on that corona walk around some of the highlights and notable landmarks of Leytonstone where I live. Um, no, it's by no means comprehensive. <laughs> Please check the comments for all the things I've missed out and some wonderful anecdotes, I'm sure. My wife and family would be wondering where the, where the dinner is, basically, so I better crack on. But some of the things I've missed out, I didn't, I didn't include the Hitchcock mosaics. I didn't go up there to the walnut tree, now the Witherspoons, which is obviously the site of one of the old houses as well. There's so much the Green Man Roundabout, the Green Man Pub. There's loads of things. I'll put some links below to some other videos I've made of walks around Leightonstone with some of the other areas in further down the high road. But uh, for now it's time for me to get the shopping, get home, feed the family, chill out, edit this video. Today's Friday, it'll be online. You'll be watching this hopefully on Sunday or sometime after that. Take care and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next walk. Wherever that may be, <laughs> it could be, it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere because I could be like dipping into my archive again for the next video. Who knows?